Finding value in the consumer discretionary industry, whether you're investing for income or total return. Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnivale, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, aka Mr. Valuation. You know, as a value investor, I'm always looking for value. And right now, as I'll show you here in a moment, we have what I consider to be a fully valued to even an overvalued overall stock market as measured by the SPY, Standard & Poor's 500 ETF. Now, it is a market of stocks, not a stock market. So even though the overall market may be overvalued, what we're going to look at here, and this is a request from our subscribers, a sector-by-sector -sector look at whether or not we can find value in various sectors, or in, in other words, whether we can find investable companies. So let's go ahead and use our screening tool with the FastGraphs Fundamental Analyzer software tool and look for value in consumer discretionary stocks. So let's start by looking at the S&P 500 ETF trust just to give us a perspective. The orange line on this graph is a P.E. ratio of 15. The blue line is the average normal P.E. that the market has applied over this roughly 20 year period which is about 18 and a half or 18.58 times earnings. So this blue line is 18 times earnings. And clearly that becomes a very good valuation reference here. Somewhere between 15 and 20 times earnings roughly, you know, would make sense for the market. It's currently trading at right at 20 times earnings or a little bit above the normal 18.58. So again, I would call the market fully valued if not slightly overvalued at this point in time. And it's been this way now for several years, going back, you know, where it started in August of 2014. We've been trading at a 18 or higher PE for most of that time, although there were times when you could, you know, find the market at more attractive levels, even a 15 PE in 2018. And of course, coming out of the Great Recession, we saw PE ratios that were you know, below 15 and, and at 15 for a period of time, that would have been a great time to be buying the market. Because obviously, you know, if you look at the market here from buying it at the 18 and a half PE, if I go into performance and look at what the performance of the market has been, it's been 8.79%. And that's without dividends reinvested. By the way, now you'll notice on fast graphs, we've added at, at a subscriber's request and, and I'd say, um, idea generation, we've added reinvesting dividends. So you can reinvest dividends very quickly just by hitting this button. So looking at, you know, investing 10,000 into the SPY trust going back to January 3rd, 2003, we would have seen that would have generated an 8.79% total return annualized. And that includes dividends, but not reinvested. If we reinvest those dividends by just clicking this toggle here, you can see it raises our number of shares to 161.6 shares at the end here. Now that gives us a rate of return of right at, you know, on 10% on the money, and that includes dividends being reinvested. So the point is, this was a pretty good time to be investing in the SPY. And if you look at it historically, you know, at that normal P.E. ratio, we've had a good run. But there have been times where we could have bought the market a lot cheaper. And I do want to stress that because had I bought the market cheaper, for example, in July of 2010, I could have paid right at a 15 multiple, which is kind of my fair value threshold. Then, you know, we'd have ended up with almost 13 percent rate of return. Um, and this is without dividends being invested instead of 8.79. So obviously, you know, it's an advantage to buy stocks when they're attractively valued. And of course, when the market got really fully valued back in 2021, that would have been a less than optimal time where we'd have barely made any money at all over this roughly two year period of time. So valuation matters and it matters a lot. So what I've done is I've gone into our screening tool here and I've developed some screens. I want to show you a couple of tricks about using the screening tool here. If you click this button twice, that will give you the created button. It will give you the, the screens that you created most recently, all right? And what I've done is I've created a screen for all of the 10 sectors, the major sectors in the market, okay? And I'm going to do them in alphabetical order. So I started out with consumer discretionary, and I broke these screens down into income and total return, and there will be some redundancy here. So let's start by looking at consumer discretionary for income, all right? And the filters that we've used here 
or we're trying to find value. Now, I want to make a point about this. And by the way, a handy trick here is if you close the filters, you can use these pop-up screens a lot easier. So what I've got here is I've got 11 stocks for income. And what I've got is I did a screen where I looked for dividend yield above 2%. You can see the lowest here was 2.83%. I looked for PEs that were, you know, below 15. And you can see they all have PEs below 15. And that gave me earnings yields above 6.5% or 7%, which is what we see in this column. And then I also had a moderate adjusted earnings persistence score because I wanted companies that had, you know, reasonably consistent earnings, not perfect because it's hard to find, but reasonable. And then I looked for companies with positive estimated earnings growth rates. And I also looked for, you know, estimated rate of returns that were pretty attractive. You know, and I looked for companies that had historical earnings growth rate that were positive as well. So this screen ended up giving me 11 stocks. Now I want to point out, you can adjust your filters on the screening tool here. You can see you have you know, screens for the general, historic, estimated, and even regions where you can pick different countries. I, I limited this to United States and Canada on these filters, but I could have screened all over and beyond the S&P 500 for all these other countries with fast graphs. That's one of the beauties of the tool. But I ended up with these 11 companies, and if I organize these by highest and lowest dividend yield, you will see that I've got, you know, Canadian Tire, Carter's, which is jewelry, Blooming Brands, you know, which is Outback Steakhouse, Dick's Sporting Goods, H&R Block, Genuine Parts, LKQ, Park Lawn, Jack in the Box, and Gillianware. So I've got a, all of these are consumer discretionary, but they're also all in different subsectors as well, or many different subsectors. So the point is, by looking at this very briefly, you know, with this pop-up here, I can see that I've got valuations where these stocks are trading at reasonable valuations relative to their historical norms. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these stocks with you because it would be redundant, you know, and be, you know, rather long for this video to run. But what I do want to do is point out that what they are. So I'm going to go through each of these at a high level first, but I'm also going to make a point here. I'm going to organize it by alphabetic order. I'm going to go ahead and click into Bloomin' Brands, which is again, Outback Steakhouse. And I'm going to quickly look at these stocks. The advantage here is this company is real cheap. If I shorten the time frame, I want you to notice no one's looking for a lot of growth here. And on a normal PE, you know, this stock might not be really a great investment going forward, you know, from here. And we'll look at that with by going to the forecasting calculators. You know, the fact that you could make a 15% rate of return if it got back to a just a 10 multiple. I'm using the Graham Dodd formula and saying fair value would be a 10 multiple with a 1% growth rate. The normal multiple on the stock has been about 10 or 11. So we've got 15 to 20% potential rate of return, but you're doing it, you know, looking at really the, the trick here is that you've got a low valuation, all right? And I just want to make it clear. So this may not suit a lot of you as terms. Now, this is a company that also cut their dividend during COVID, but that's understandable. But now they've reinstated their dividend and the dividend's begun growing again. They reinstated it at 56 cents and they raised it to 96 cents and a dollar four and a dollar 20 estimates. So, you know, this it would be one that's attractive. Now, I've spent a little time on this one because I want you just to get the flavor here. So I'm going to go through these very quickly, these 11 stocks. Here's Carter's. Carter's obviously had some trouble because they're in malls and they had trouble when COVID came. And then their earnings recovered pretty nicely, and they are expected to recover in the future. I'm looking at them from a forecasting point of view. We got a little better growth, and this could be a you know good gen you know generator. I'm going to stick with the forecasting graph here. Here's Canadian Tire. It is expected to have a bad year this year, an earnings drop of about 30 percent. So when I look at the historical graph, you can see that earnings drop, and that has really caused you know, some issues, but there is expected to be a recovery. Now, when you see a blank space like this, it simply means there's no estimate being given for that in the adjusted operating earnings. They haven't reported an estimate, but you can go to basic earnings or even gap earnings, which is diluted earnings, and see that there are estimates for dividends going forward. And again, growth is expected to recover at a pretty high rate, about 18% next year. And that would end up giving us a very substantial rate of return if the stock 
traded at a 15 multiple. A normal multiple for the stock would be about 12 times earnings, which would still give us a 25% rate of return. And this is actually, you know, looking at diluted earnings now. If you looked at operating earnings, you would see a little slightly different numbers. I want to make this clear. What a great tool FastGraphs is because it gives you the ability to review these companies from all these different metrics. And I definitely like to look at operating cash flow and even free cash flow when I'm looking at an income screen because I want to make sure that I've got enough cash flow to cover the dividend and Canadian Tire fits that bill. Going on to Dick's Sporting Goods. Dick's Sporting Goods looks like their cash flow is very strong. They you know, had a down year during COVID or coming into COVID and they recovered very strongly. And now, you know, they've had a couple of years of negative earnings growth here. But the stock, interestingly enough, has held up pretty well. But looking at it going forward, we've got about 7% expected growth by these analysts. And again, you can look and see that that's including the fact that the earnings growth has actually been decreasing for 2025. But now they've raised it to 1755 from 1735 just recently. So they're apparently getting a little more positive. And then, of course, you've got the analyst scorecard that you can always look at. The one-year forecast with a 10% margin of error, they've missed estimates about 25% of the time. They've either beat them or hit them, you know, roughly 75% of the time. So that gives you some confidence that these numbers might be good. The normal multiple, again, has been very low here recently, and you can look at historical. This is based on operating cash flow. As far as operating earnings, we're looking at you know roughly a 16 multiple um, as used as a valuation reference. That's what's being drawn on this graph here. But again, Dick Sporting Goods looks like it might be an attractive investment going forward. And then we've got Gildan Activewear. And again, this was another mall-based apparel accessories and luxury goods, and they suffered pretty badly with COVID, but they did recover which just indicates that this, I think this needs to be generally ignored as far as, you know, general normal operating results. The company stock price has already recovered strongly. I think that's something you should take into consideration. So the best time to have bought this probably would have been, you know, anywhere over the last couple of years. It might be getting a little pricey now, but still has an opportunity to generate a decent rate of return at an 18 multiple and at a 16 multiple you know, it still offers a pretty good rate of return. I said 18 multiple, this is a 15 multiple. All right, so between 15 and 16 times earnings is where analysts are expecting this to go. So Gildan Activewear looks pretty interesting. Then Genuine Parts is one that I'm going to feature, so I'm going to come back to that. Here's H&R Block. We're expecting to see a strong recovery in earnings. H&R Block looks very, very attractive here. They had some down earnings years in COVID. The company doesn't have what I would call a real great long-term growth record, but they are expected to begin accelerating going forward with taxes becoming, I guess, more prevalent prevalent on people's minds. So analysts are expecting pretty strong growth over the next couple of years, including this year. And, you know, those estimates have actually been increasing. So they're getting more sanguine. H&R Block looks very attractive at these levels. Jack in a Box, the restaurant chain, is also expected to generate double-digit earnings growth. Historically, this has been a reasonably solid growth story. It has had, you know, some periods of time where earnings have faltered a little bit. Dividend record is a little spotty, but it does offer a 2.27% dividend yield. And once again, these are all companies for income. LKQ just started paying a dividend at about 2.5% rate of return. It has been more of a growth story, long run, but it does look very inexpensive today. Park Lawn, which is specialized consumer services. I don't know this company. I can simply use Fast Graphs, go into the corporate website here and discover what they are. They're the largest publicly traded Canadian-owned funeral, cremation, and cemetery provider. You know, I could make some bad jokes here, but I'm not going to about people dying to get into this industry. But the point is, the stock has always commanded a premium valuation of over almost, of somewhere around 28 times earnings. That's the blue line on this graph. You know, fair value using the formulas would estimate it to be worth 15 times earnings. So going to the forecasting calculator at a 15 times earnings, we'd have double-digit return. Going to the normal multiple of 28 or 29, and again, I can select, you know, multiple. That's the five-year multiple. I can go in and, you know, be a little more conservative and, and hit the 27, 26.97 multiple. 
but I've got very excellent rate of return potential if the stock were to move back into its normal valuation, the premium valuation that the market has applied here. On the other hand, if I go ahead and look at you know the normal, the fair value multiple, I still would have an opportunity to make double digit returns going out and it has a 2.6% dividend yield. Now this is sleep country, Canadian, home furnishing retail in Canada, expected to have very strong growth going forward. You know, historically, this company, again, has been a strong grower. 15 times earnings has been kind of a norm, but I want you to notice the volatility here. You had periods where it's traded in the 30 multiple, as well as periods when I got the PE got down to as low as five. It's currently trading at just 11.8. This has some very attractive prospects going forward for very strong rates of return and a dividend yield of 3.77%. And going into performance very quickly, they did cut their dividend once, but you know, the, the company has, um, and by the way, I'm doing this in Canadian dollars and comparing the market in Canadian dollars. It's underperformed the market generally. Um, if I reinvest dividends, it's still under you know, perform the market, but it is more of a growth story than it is an income story. But because it's so inexpensive and because it does pay a dividend, it does offer a pretty attractive current dividend yield as well. Now, this was the discretionary income stocks. If I go through this portfolio, if you look into my portfolios here and go into my portfolios and look for consumer discretionary total return, if I go into this screen, I get a little different screen here. This is the income sector. If I go into the total return sector here, or the total return issue, looking at my screens, and look for consumer discretionary total return, what I get here is 21 stocks instead of 11. And I'm obviously not going to bore you with going through those, but I do want to make sure you understand what the difference is here. Some of these stocks do not have a dividend, or some of them have dividend yields that are below 2%. Okay, so this, you know, gives us some opportunity to look at some stocks that if, if growth is your, you know, opportunity, you're going to see that, you know, most of the income stocks are, all, are still included in this. So we only have a few. For example, we have Fox Factory here, which is a very interesting growth stock. It's automotive parts and equipment. It's inexpensive. It doesn't offer a dividend. It has traded at much higher valuations in the past. It did have a down year, which brought the stock down, but it is expected to recover at double digit rates going forward. Now, one of the other factors that I want to basically illustrate here, as I've always said many, many times, it's a market of stocks, not a stock market. And I want you to understand when you say the market's up or the market's down, you're making a very, very general statement. But specifically within that market, there will always be fairly valued, undervalued and overvalued stocks to be found. I've never seen a market where that wasn't true. And the companies are also very, very different, as you can see by what I've gone through with this presentation so far. You know, you've got companies in all types of different industries and different sectors that, you know, from these different screening tools. You know, here's Spin Master, which is a Canadian leisure products, I guess, toys, I'm going to guess it is what it does. If I go ahead and go into the stock, it has kind of a cyclical spotty record. It's very inexpensive now. It is expected to grow going forward. There's no dividend or a very minimal dividend yield. And they're not forecasting at operating earnings. So if I go to basic, um, I'm not getting any forecast of earnings of dividends either. So, but the company does pay a modest dividend. The point is, this is a very different company than the ones we're looking at. Now, if I was, you know, looking for a good stock to invest, whether it was total return or income, the one that I would probably settle on here would be genuine parts. It's a triple B rated company. It only has 46% debt to capital. And as you can see, it's been a very consistent grower. It faltered a little bit during the recession, but earnings still held up very well. And they did raise their dividend right through the Great Recession. Coming into the COVID recession, I'll call it the mini recession that lasted just a brief time, the stock did slump, but then it recovered very quickly and very strongly. And once again, we see that this company has continued to raise their dividend. All right, the stock was pretty, you know, overvalued back in, you know, late last year. You know, it was trading at PEs over 20. You can currently buy it at a PE under 15. It does offer a 2.78% dividend yield, and it is expected to have some decent growth going forward. And so I would consider this the, probably the, one of the more conservative stocks to invest in in this. 
consumer discretionary sector that I found. But looking at things like operating cash flow, historically, the operating cash flows have really covered the dividend. So here I'd be looking at it for a combination of income as well as capital you know, appreciation going forward. If I look at free cash flow, the company's free cash flow, this is what's left over after what it costs to run the business, has you know generally covered the dividend very nicely over time. So this is one that I personally would like and I personally have in portfolios that I manage for people. It's one that I'm just beginning to add and I'll be adding it as long as the price holds up. We've also we've seen it, you know, already start to recover a little bit. You know, this stock is normally traded at around an 18 PE. That's, you know, that's a high valuation for a company that's grown at about 7%. Now, again, this is an analytical tool and these are valuation references. Okay, obviously it makes sense to buy stocks, you know, when they're trading at on the low end of their valuations. And if you can buy them when they're extremely attractive, you can do very well. If we look at the long-term performance of genuine parts, you know, we see that it's literally at a dead heat with the S&P 500. If I reinvest dividends, you can see the number of shares, you know, go up to 605 shares by the end then it's actually outperformed the S&P 500 just a little bit. But I would say it's done it at less risk than a lot of the S&P 500 stocks have been. This is a very consistent company, very consistent grower. It's got a very uh, you know, excellent credit rating and a moderate you know, area of debt. And we're going to be adding some debt enhancements, by the way, in the future. So Genuine Parts you know, looks like a very attractive and compelling opportunity to invest in a very high quality company. So I went in and I screened the discretionary sector for total return. I also, you know, screened it for income, as I showed you here in these portfolios. And I ended up with 21 for total return. And as far as consumer discretionary or income, I ended up with 11 stocks. And, you know, I went through those with you. So I do want to kind of summarize this by making a couple of, of statements here. Number one is that, you know, it's a market of stocks, not a stock market. And these stocks really are in all kind of different sizes, shapes, flavors, and so on. Different kinds of cyclicality, different levels of debt, different levels of you know, a lot of things. But all these stocks, the thing that they do share in common, whether you're looking for total return or income, is that they all are recently reasonably valued relative to historical norms. And that's in contrast, of course, to the S&P 500 that has, you know, currently is, in my view, fully valued, if not moderately overvalued. And the S&P 500 does offer a 1.5% dividend yield, but the ones I screened here for income would give you a higher yield than that and some, you know, strong growth potential. So maybe not all these stocks are investable. I do want to make that clear. Just because they screened doesn't make them investable. That just means that they might be worth looking at or digging deeper into and utilizing the FastGraph Fundamental Analyzer software tool can really help you do that. Because with the tool, you know, once you find a, identify a company that you like and identify genuine parts here, you can go into the corporate website, you can go into investor services, your investors, and, you know, you can look at, you know, announcements, you can look at earnings releases, you can look at webcasts, you can look at presentations, and, you know, research these stocks deeper and faster. You can also use the Fast Graph tool. I subscribe to Morningstar. You can go directly into Morningstar with them, and, you know, Morningstar, you know, rates this company with a higher fair value than it currently is. Genuine Parts trades at $135.62. Morningstar gives it a fair value of 161, and their uncertainty, they call it as medium, this is a high quality company. Their five star price would be 112, their one star price would be 217. So the point is, you know, this is a stock where you can do further research and make up your own mind. I, pre I like this stock here, I liked it a little better a couple months ago, or a month or so ago, but I think it's still investable at this level. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival taking a look at the consumer discretionary sector. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, give me a like. Now, this is one in a series of videos. I'm going to be doing 10 videos covering all the sectors of the S&P 500. The next video will be consumer staples. I'm going to simply do them in alphabetical order. And I'm going to keep this form. I'm going to look at some for total return and some for income. And I think the, the lesson I want to add there is, you know, it's not always 
you know, just beating the S&P 500, which is a common refrain. You want to invest according to your own goals, objectives, and risk tolerances. And you also want to invest for your, you know, when I say your own goals, if you need income, don't buy non-dividend paying stocks, buy dividend paying stocks. If you need that income to increase, then pay attention to what the dividend growth rate has been of any stocks you're looking at. Just because they screen out at fair value and through all these screens doesn't mean they're investable. And, and even if they are investable, it doesn't mean it's investable for you. We're all unique. You know, people buy bonds for stability and safety and income. You know, people take more risk in stocks, but they look for, you know, the opportunity to get capital gain as well as a, an income stream and hopefully a rising income stream. But the key is to invest with your eyes wide open, know what you're looking at. And that's what I'm going to try to do with this. I'm going to try to show that there are companies in virtually every sector that are attractive now. Some have more opportunities than others because it depends on what kind of sector. And some have, you know, more stable companies than other sectors. But I hope you find it interesting to look at these stocks through all these various sectors. Thanks for watching. Give me a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And take a look at subscribing to FastGrass. What a great fundamental analyzer software tool that can help you make smarter, long-term investment decisions. And I emphasize long-term. Thanks for watching.